It's hard for me to wrap my head around this, but are you all really planning on coming to this event? I'm honestly surprised you're even considering it. Nancy, why would you say something like that? This ceremony is supposed to be dignified, and having a family like yours here, which isn't exactly wealthy, kind of takes away from that sophistication. So, could you kindly leave as soon as you can? On the day of my brother's wedding, our family's happiness started to fade when my brother's bride-to-be, dressed in her flawless white gown, spoke words that felt cold and heavy, overshadowing her beautiful appearance and casting a shadow over our spirit. She looked down on our family, aware of the others watching, leaving us completely taken aback. It seemed she believed our simple presence lowered the prestige of her world. Her baseless insults were directed only at us, showing a clear disdain for our family. Yet in response to this unjust treatment, only our dad burst into laughter, as if to lighten the mood. Hey, what an interesting situation, dad said, his laughter surprising everyone around and bringing a moment of silence to the crowd. I'm Karen, 22 years old, living a pretty normal life. I graduated from an average university and now work as an admin at a reputable company. Ordinary is probably the best word to describe my journey so far. My dad, on the other hand, is a renowned figure in neurology. After years at a university hospital, he started his own clinic. Now semi-retired, he focuses fully on brain research. The clinic is currently managed by a protege of his. My parents and friends often ask why I didn't follow in the medical footsteps. They expect a lot from me, but I always say the same thing. The responsibility of dealing with life and death is too much for me. I want to make a difference and help people, but that doesn't mean I'm ready to take on the noble role of a doctor. My brother James, however, chose differently. Three years my senior, he's always been academically brilliant and got into a prestigious medical school directly. He's also quite handsome, which makes him popular, but his academic and social success seems to have changed him, especially after a certain point. Back when I was in high school, my brother's social life took off after he got into medical school. His dates became the talk of the town, and his trips home grew few and far between. Though he was supposedly immersed in university life, his social media painted a different picture, one where he was often seen enjoying the company of various women. This pattern didn't escape our father's notice, and it sparked a family argument when my brother dropped by home after weeks away. During this rare visit, my dad confronted him, visibly upset. James, can you explain what exactly you're doing with your time at university? James, ever the casual one, shrugged it off. What's the big deal, Dad? I'm passing my classes and doing fine with my grades. But Dad wasn't having any of it. It's not just about grades, he said sternly. Being a doctor is more than that. You need to be able to understand and share the feelings of your patients. James, impatient, replied, Ah, oh, that's such a hassle. Nowadays, if you're skilled, you can be anything. Can we not stick to these old-fashioned ideas? Dad was taken aback and deeply upset by his response. James grew more defiant. I can't stand this oppressive vibe. Please, just stop interfering in my life, Dad. During these exchanges, my brother boldly stated his views, not sparing me either. He made it clear he thought little of me, saying things like, you're nowhere near my level. Clumsy as you are, you're lucky to have a brother like me. Every time he visited, he'd throw insults my way. Growing up, I'd always measured myself against him, which left me unable to stand up for myself. Despite finishing his medical studies, my brother hit a roadblock. He passed the national exam but couldn't land a job at any healthcare facility. He was confident in his abilities and even applied to two top university hospitals, only to be rejected by both. It turned out the issue was his attitude during the interviews. We learned what really happened through some of my dad's friends at those hospitals. Despite his qualifications, his lack of experience and, more importantly, his demeanor in those interviews seemed to be the deal-breakers. My brother displayed an arrogant demeanor, confidently asserting that he could boost the hospital's finances and openly mocked our father's advice to prioritize patient empathy with a disdainful chuckle. Upon learning about my brother's predicament, my father, torn between disappointment and hope, addressed him with a blend of calm and authority. James, 
You'll start working at our family clinic for now, he proposed. My brother was taken aback. Why should I do that? My father calmly but firmly pressed on. It's a temporary measure, until you find your footing elsewhere. Use this time to get back to the basics. James accepted, albeit grudgingly, his face a mix of resignation and discontent. His attitude toward our family was unmistakably filled with resentment. Yet, in his confusion and frustration, he was embraced by our father, who offered him a chance to start anew. Whether motivated by paternal love, professional ethics, or another reason, my father hoped James would evolve into a compassionate doctor. Despite this, James showed no signs of wanting to meet those expectations. Now employed at our father's clinic, patient grievances about him are frequent, and rumors of his poor conduct spread widely. Instead of improving, James's egocentric behavior has intensified within the clinic. He boasts about eventually succeeding our father as the clinic's director, causing unease among everyone. We're left to hope that, eventually, my father's sincere wishes will resonate with James. In the midst of this, James brought home a surprising guest to introduce to us as his fiancée A. This is my fiancée A, he announced with assurance. We were rendered speechless by the abruptness of the introduction. While his fiancée A appeared sophisticated and well-mannered at first glance, there was something off about her demeanor and smile that made me uneasy. The way she looked at our family with a subtly arrogant smile raised questions and discomfort within me. I couldn't help but wonder what lay behind that unsettling presence. Was it all in my head, or was there something more to be wary of? The unease I felt since the day we met my future sister-in-law lingers. Despite my reservations, the wheels for my brother's wedding were set in motion. Since getting engaged, my brother, who once lived by himself, started coming home more often. Yet, these visits weren't about cherishing family time. They were about seeking financial aid from our parents for his upcoming wedding. Just the other day, he was asking for a significant sum for the wedding, I remember. James, my father began, I'm glad you're getting married. But as someone about to start a new family, you need to connect with each patient genuinely. How many times will I hear this lecture? I engage with my patients enough, James retorted, clearly annoyed. Then why do we keep hearing complaints? Some patients have even asked to switch doctors, my father countered, citing specific incidents to make his point. Those complaints probably come from not meeting their expectations. They should just listen and not complain all the time, James snapped back. My father, with a sterner voice, said, Your attitude is the issue. It's affecting the hospital's reputation. You need to understand the seriousness of this. James, irritated, conceded, fine, I get it. Be more empathetic, right? If that's what it takes, then help me with the wedding costs. I want it to be memorable for Nancy. We were briefly moved by James's fervent appeal. After some thought, my father agreed with a condition. Okay, James, but you must become a responsible doctor and a supportive husband. Yes, Dad. I'll be the dependable doctor you envision. If I keep my word, will you help with the wedding? James promised. Deal. We'll support the wedding, my father concluded, hoping James would live up to his promise. I'll have the estimates for you later, James said. And when he finally sent them over, the figure was a staggering $50,000. Holding the estimate, which took me by surprise, I turned to my father unsure. Dad, are you sure about this? Are we really going to spend so much on the wedding? A wedding is a once-in-a-lifetime event. James wants to make it memorable for Nancy and himself, and I understand that desire, Dad explained. But I couldn't help wondering if this was just my brother being extravagant. But $50,000, Dad? Isn't that a bit much? It's okay, Karen. I believe James has begun to see things differently. Maybe even taken some time to reflect, Dad reassured me. Though I remained skeptical about my brother's capacity for such reflection. Even so, Dad, when it's my turn, you'll do the same for me, right? I asked, half-jokingly. Of course, Karen. When your time comes, I'll be there for you too, he promised. Which didn't exactly address my concerns, but at least confirmed his support was unconditional. Resolved that the financial decisions were ultimately Dad's to make, I tried to put aside my doubts about James's intentions. However, 
My worry didn't just disappear. On a day off, as I was enjoying some shopping in the city center, I unexpectedly bumped into James and Nancy. They greeted me with smiles that seemed to carry a hidden agenda. Look who it is, Karen. Long time no see. You're coming to the wedding next month, right? James asked as if there was any chance I'd miss it. Of course, I'll be there. I wouldn't miss it for the world, I replied, though the enthusiasm wasn't mutual. Just make sure you bring a nice gift, okay? James added, setting an awkward tone. Nancy then chimed in. Karen, have you thought about how much you're going to give for the wedding gift? I hesitated. Well, I've looked up what's usual. If it's less than $3,500, you might want to think again, she suggested, catching me completely off guard. Is that normal? I asked, puzzled by such an expectation. It's only common sense, right? Especially for family, Nancy insisted, leaving me flabbergasted. This was the first I'd heard of such common sense, and it left me wondering where these expectations were coming from. Understanding the usual range for a wedding gift from siblings to be around $800 to $12, I had initially decided to generously contribute $2,000 to steer clear of any potential friction. Yet being confronted with such a staggering and unexpected demand from Nancy left me dumbfounded. The audacity to suggest a gift of at least $3,500 was something I couldn't fathom. What assumptions were they operating under to demand such a significant amount, especially from someone not directly involved in the wedding? This incident only intensified the uneasy feelings I had harbored since our first encounter, painting my future sister-in-law as someone who might prove challenging to get along with. After processing the shock, I discussed this development with my parents back home. To my surprise, they maintained a composed stance and concurred that $2,000 was a fitting sum for a wedding gift. Despite my reluctance to bend to Nancy's unrealistic expectations, I agreed to proceed with the original amount I had in mind, believing it to be a judicious choice under the circumstances. With mixed feelings of duty and anticipation, coupled with ongoing reservations about my brother's choices, I attended his wedding. Dressed in an elegant green ensemble, I allowed the celebratory ambiance, with its vibrant decorations and sumptuous banquet, to momentarily distract me from my concerns. The ceremony was beautiful, transporting us through time with its splendor. However, the time for photos brought an unwelcome jolt back to reality. As Nancy and my brother approached our table, her smile carried an unmistakable tinge of contempt. Oh, just showing up like usual, huh? Having a poor family here really drags down the whole event's class. Maybe you could leave a bit early? She suggested with a sneer. Her words were like a slap in the face, igniting a fury in me I hadn't known before. The notion of being labeled as a poor family was absurd and utterly reprehensible. Not just I.E., but our parents too were taken aback, rendered speechless by such blatant disrespect. My brother's reaction, a hearty laugh only added insult to injury, leaving me staring at him, bewildered and demanding an explanation for such inexcusable behavior. My voice shook as I confronted my brother. Wait, how can you just stand there? Why would Nancy say something so terrible? I demanded an explanation, puzzled and hurt. James's response was filled with a smug arrogance. Because it's true. You're looking at the winner here. I'm on my way to becoming the head of the clinic, a real success in life, he boasted, his laughter ringing with contempt. It was as if he was announcing his victory to us, the so-called losers completely oblivious to the fact that his position was largely thanks to our father's support. Our family was stunned into silence, but Nancy wasn't finished. When will you stop groveling to James? Relying on your child's success? How pathetic, Nancy sneered turning her mockery towards me. You work at some low-tire company, don't you? And a wedding gift of just $2,000? How laughable! I tried to defend myself, but her words cut deep. It's just that I began, but she continued her relentless critique, insinuating that we were all trying to ride on my brother's coattails because he was destined to be the next clinic director. Next clinic director? I echoed in disbelief. Yes, exactly. 
James is the chosen one, Nancy said, as if this was the most obvious thing in the world. Standing beside her, James wore a look of satisfaction, as if everything Nancy said was an indisputable truth. According to Nancy, our family was financially struggling a narrative my brother seemed to have shared, painting himself as the clinic's future leader, a claim that was news to everyone, including the current director. The mood among the guests shifted uncomfortably at these revelations. James and Nancy, however, seemed unaffected, their smiles growing even more disdainful. But the moment that changed everything was when my father suddenly burst into laughter. His deep, hearty laughter filled the room, altering the atmosphere entirely. What a splendid joke this is, he declared, still chuckling. Feeling uneasy, I turned to him for some kind of reassurance. It's fine, just let it go. Let's head home, he said, still laughing. His laughter somehow made it easier to breathe, reminding us that the value of our family couldn't be diminished by such baseless arrogance. I stood there, shocked, as my father announced we were leaving the wedding early. We're not welcome here, just seen as a poor family to mock, he said with a resignation that took me by surprise. I wanted to protest, to argue that we shouldn't let their words drive us away but my father was already moving towards the exit. Meanwhile, my brother and his wife seemed almost eager to see us leave. Then, turning to James with a serene composure, my father said, I'm not sure why you feel the need to pretend, but you should keep your ego in check. James, taken aback, responded, What do you mean, Dad? I'm not pretending anything. Is that so? My father continued then, as the next director, you should be able to demonstrate your abilities elsewhere, not just rely on this hospital. He then discreetly spoke to the current director, who nodded in agreement with whatever was being discussed. Now leave this place. Find a job at another hospital, my father advised James, who was visibly stunned by this directive. If you're truly meant to be a director, you'll succeed anywhere with your skills. Or is it that you're not as confident as you claim? Caught off guard, James fell silent, his defiance melting away. Nancy, by his side, turned pale, gripping his arm tightly, unable to comprehend the situation. James, what's going on? How can your dad dismiss you like that? James remained silent, his body language reflecting a turmoil of emotions he couldn't articulate. Nancy's voice became more insistent, seeking clarity on the promises James had made about their future. Amidst her probing, James seemed lost, disconnected from the conversation around him. Observing this, my father offered a smile filled with patience and understanding. Nancy, there's more to the story than you know. The hospital James works at is the same one I used to run, he explained, revealing a truth that surprised her. But Dad, aren't you working independently now? Nancy questioned, echoing one of the many fabrications James had spun. The reality was far from the tales James had told. My father's gentle clarification began to unravel the web of deceit, painting a picture of the situation that was rooted in truth, not in the inflated stories James had shared. The reality of our family situation is much different from what Nancy had been led to believe. I am indeed a doctor. My wife dedicates herself to our home, and Karen has a stable job in a leading management position within a prominent company. This revelation shocked Nancy, dismantling the illusion that we were a financially struggling family. In truth, James has faced numerous setbacks in his medical career, and I've had to support him through his job search challenges. There was never a plan to appoint him as the director of the hospital. The unfolding events at the wedding solidified my decision that releasing James from his position at the hospital was the right move, allowing me to do so without any reservations. As I laid bare these truths, the atmosphere shifted dramatically, burdening Nancy with a new reality. When I announced my decision to let James go and refuse to cover the extravagant $50,000 wedding bill, Nancy's disbelief and distress were palpable. With a steady resolve, I signaled for us to leave the venue, my wife and Karen following suit. As we departed, Nancy's protests lingered in the air, a stark contrast to the composed exit we made. The aftermath of that day was telling. The wedding ceremony was ultimately called off, the guests dispersed, and the anticipated funds to cover the wedding expenses were not realized, placing a heavy financial burden on James and Nancy. Both found themselves jobless, 
with Nancy having quit her job in expectation of a more comfortable life, and James, despite being a doctor, struggling to secure a stable employment. The financial strain forced them into debt as they scrambled to manage through part-time work, their hopes of securing positions in reputable hospitals growing dimmer. As for our family, we've moved past the incident, no longer engaging in conversations about my brother. My parents have shifted their focus away from his future, bringing back a sense of peace and contentment to our home. This experience has underscored a crucial lesson, no matter one's intellect or qualifications, without empathy and respect for others. Acceptance in society remains elusive. I believe that being able to connect and communicate effectively with others is more crucial than having top-notch grades. This is something my fat Nancy Ayer has always emphasized, and it's a principle I hold dear. I'm dedicated to becoming someone who can really resonate with people on a personal level. Moving forward, I'm committed to putting even more effort into enhancing my ability to interact and build meaningful relationships with those around me. I'm just saying it's time for you to leave. Can't you look at yourself in the mirror and feel embarrassed? Am I embarrassing to you? Yes, you are. Everything about this is embarrassing. Even my close friends and boss are here, and thinking about them finding out you're becoming part of the family is so frustrating. My name is Olivia. I was born with a physical condition, and I use a wheelchair instead of my legs. I grew up in a family of five with my parents, who have passed away, and my lively brother, John. My parents raised me with as much love and care as any other child. They showered me with affection, and my brother John, though a bit overprotective, has always been supportive. That's how I've lived a happy life. Now, Madam CEO, here's the schedule for this month. I'm grateful and happy to be busy, but I do wish for a little break sometimes. Despite my appearance, I'm the CEO of a company. Even though my body is different, I do my best in everything I can. That's why I studied hard and didn't want to be outdone by others. My hard work paid off, and I was able to start my own business. While I'm discussing the schedule with my secretary, I get a call. Hello John, what's up? Hey, sorry to bother you when you're busy. Actually, I'm getting married, and I wanted to tell you first. Olivia, really, congratulations, what's the person like? We met through work. They're kind, good at cooking and housework, just wonderful. That's great. As your sister, I'm relieved you found someone. Stop talking like our mom, will you? Well, I was just worried if you could really find someone wonderful. How? Well, the wedding is set for five months from now. That's quite sudden, isn't it? With how things are nowadays, we just thought it was the right time. I'm sorry it's all so rushed, but can you make it, Olivia? Of course. I'll be there. It's your wedding after all. I'll make it work no matter what. But you better come to my wedding too. Thanks. Wait your wedding, Olivia. I haven't heard anything about that. Haha. <laughs> Don't work too hard. Okay, see you. As I hurriedly managed my work schedule for the wedding, my secretary watched me with a warm smile. My brother and I are busy people in different industries, and I haven't met his fiancé yet. The day of the wedding came, and as I was about to enter the venue, someone called out to me. Hey, you there, wait a moment. Oh, are you talking to me? Are you, by any chance? What? It's obvious, isn't it? I'm the bride the star of today's show. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Olivia, John's sister. I was glad to meet Nicole the bride, but her attitude seemed a bit strange. While I was wondering about it, she suddenly said, Hey, what's with this woman? I can't believe this. Nicole, what's going on? Don't touch me, please. I wasn't told that John had a sister like you. I knew he had a sister, but not like this. I had no idea. It seemed like Nicole didn't like how I looked. That's why she acted so cold when we greeted each other. What's the matter with you? She said. I don't care if you're John's sister or whatever. That's a different matter. How will you compensate if you infect me with something? Please calm down. There's nothing about me that you can catch. Keep quiet. Your droplets are spreading. I can't believe this. 
People like you should be mentioned beforehand. Finding this out on the wedding day is the worst. Worst? What about me is the worst? You should figure it out yourself. Anyway, John and I are getting married, so I'll have to deal with you whether I like it or not. If people find out someone like you is my sister-in-law, I'll be humiliated in front of everyone. Use your head a bit. Use my head? What do you mean? I'm saying you should be considerate enough to leave. Can't you look at yourself in the mirror and feel ashamed? Am I an embarrassment to you? Yes, all of it. Everything about this is embarrassing. Even my close friends and boss are here, and it's embarrassing that they'll know you're part of the family. Do you always think like this? Huh, that's none of your business. Since I've caught John, the CEO, don't you dare get in my way. I was sure that Nicole was tricking my brother. She was clearly pretending to be nice. My brother, who is always kind and never gets angry, had been fooled by a strange woman before. Remembering those times, I didn't want to make things worse on his special day. Thinking about how important this day was for my brother, I decided to leave quietly. Um, then I'll be leaving now, I'll just leave the gift here. Huh, I don't need money from someone like you. You don't even look like you can hold a decent job. You're just leeching off John, aren't you? I bet your gift is something small like $7, right? Is that so? Then I'll take this $70,000 gift back with me. It's quite heavy though. $70,000? Wait, if you had that much money, you should have said so earlier. I'll take it. Sorry, I've already put it away. It's too late now. I'll be leaving then. No, you leave that gift here. And why do you even have that much money? Oh, I see. That's money you took from John, isn't it? No, actually, I run a company that makes mobility equipment with a global reputation. Even though I look different, my company makes $700 million a year, so a gift like this is no big deal. All the more reason to leave that $70,000 here. I'll use it for John and my happiness. Honestly, I don't approve of your marriage to my brother. I can't accept someone like you who is just after his money. Stop raising your voice. It's your fault for being deceived. What's all this about? My brother John appeared, and Nickel looked shocked. Uh, this is, well, what are you talking about? Brother, no, it's not like that. I'm not after the money. I just wanted to support and be there for you, John. Hey, Nickel, what did you say to my precious sister, Olivia? What did you mean by what you said? John, why are you so angry? It doesn't matter to me if you're after my money or whatever. You can do as you like. It's my responsibility, and even if we break up someday, I won't be angry. But what I absolutely won't forgive is you disrespecting my dear Olivia. I was really surprised to see my usually gentle and calm brother raise his voice. But I also felt truly happy to hear him standing up for me. Meanwhile, Nicol, who was scolded by my brother, said, well, then she can come to the wedding, okay? So first, John, let's calm down, all right. What do you mean she can come? We don't need your permission. Do you really think I'd go through with a wedding with someone who's been so cruel to Olivia, the most important person in my world? There's no way that's happening. Why not? I just said your sister can come. That doesn't matter anymore. I can and won't marry a woman who insults my family. We're breaking off the wedding. Breaking off the wedding? Why? Both Olivia and I lost our parents when we still needed them. Olivia cried because she was lonely, but she still tried to cheer me up when I was sad. Even though she wanted to cry, she held it back and gave me the brightest smile. She was just a little kid in elementary school, and I was already in high school, a grown man. She held back her tears and told me to smile and that gave me strength. Brother, you remembered that? Of course I do, how could I forget? You are holding back so many tears but still managed to smile. I still remember that smile of yours to this day. That's why, even when work gets tough, I think of your smile and it keeps me going. You tried to do house chores you only learned in home economics, but before I knew it, you are just making meals, you are preparing lunches too. 
Olivia and I supported each other through life like that. I won't forgive anyone who insults such an important family member, apologize to Olivia. Supporting each other, really? That's so exaggerated. Take back every single thing you said to Olivia. Look her in the eyes and apologize properly. Don't say anything else. My brother kept insisting that Nicole apologize to me for the disrespect she showed. We siblings have had struggles that only we can understand. And maybe that's why her words felt like an insult. As I stood there, unable to do anything but watch my brother, someone approached us. Sorry to interrupt, just popping in here. Hey, do you even understand what kind of company you're working for? What? Why is the CEO here? You see, John has helped me a lot in business, and we even go out for meals together when we have time in our private lives. Isn't our company a distributor of mobility equipment? Yet your attitude and behavior are completely unacceptable from any angle. I looked at him surprised. Wait, Scott, why are you here? I asked. Scott, I'm sorry you had to see such an unpleasant scene, John said. But do you know Olivia? I had no idea either. I'm also shocked to learn that John's dear sister is Olivia. I'm in a relationship with Olivia, and I want to marry her. So I'm asking for your no, my brother-in-law's permission, Scott explained, his words a bit awkward. Really, Scott, bringing this up right now, and suddenly talking about being brothers-in-law? John said, shaking his head. This is typical, Scott. John, Olivia is getting married to Scott, Anna interjected, trying to lighten the mood. But I trust you, Scott. I know you'll take good care of Olivia. Why is everyone suddenly so happy? John wondered aloud. John, I promise to devote my life to making Olivia happy. I won't let you down. Please, let me marry Olivia, Scott pleaded earnestly. And you're saying this here, right now? John said, still processing. My boyfriend Scott, who is also the CEO of Nickel Company, had just revealed his relationship with me to my brother John. They had both been friends in business and in life but neither knew how we were all connected until now. Nickel, who was witnessing all this, finally spoke up. Wait a minute, what? So this woman is the girlfriend of our company's CEO, and John, the savvy entrepreneur, is her brother? That's incredible, but even if it's luck, Olivia worked hard to get here. She faced everything head-on and used her brains to succeed. Don't belittle her achievements by calling it luck. And by the way, she just became my fiancé a moment ago. So you understand what it means to insult the woman I'm marrying, right? Nickel replied defiantly, So what if I did? I don't care if she's your girlfriend or fiancé or whatever. What's a CEO going to do? It's just personal stuff, right? Well, yes, Scott replied calmly, but there are clients here, and the company's reputation is at stake. Your remarks, Nickel, are a serious issue. In my company, such behavior would be grounds for dismissal. I don't want to work with a company that harbors individuals like you. You can't just fire me. That would be a problem, Nickel protested. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I can't stand the idea of someone like you becoming my sister-in-law. If you can't understand why you need to apologize, then there's no point in talking any further. Scott said firmly. Wait, please. Breaking off the engagement and getting fired are big problems for me. How am I supposed to live if that happens? Nickel begged, her tone desperate. Why don't you look for another company? Scott suggested calmly. I'm done with you, Nickel, Scott said firmly. But you still want me to get you a job at my company? Nickel's eyes widened with desperation. John, please, can you help me get a job? I'm your sister-in-law. Isn't there something you can do? She pleaded. John shook his head slowly. Nickel, you really don't get it, do you? After all this mess, there's no way you're getting hired at my company. It's not about family ties. It's about trust and respect. But I'm family. Isn't it embarrassing to leave me unemployed? Nickel's voice cracked as she tried to defend herself. Embarrassing? No, it's not embarrassing, John said his tone softening slightly. 
but if you're just calling this a mistake, it means you actually believe what you said. You haven't shown any real intention to apologize. It doesn't look like you mean it. Nichols' face flushed with panic as she realized the gravity of her situation. I didn't mean to offend anyone, I just said the wrong thing. If it was a mistake, Nickel, it was a big one, Scott said, his expression serious. I faced many people's judgments, but you're the first to speak so openly and harshly to me. It was a shock, but now I see that some people really think like you do. Does that mean you'll forgive me? Nickel asked, her eyes wide with hope. No, I can't forgive you, Scott replied, shaking his head. Who wouldn't be upset after hearing what you said? Imagine if someone spoke to you like that. Would you be happy? If it were me, I'd probably respond even more harshly, Nickel admitted, her voice barely a whisper. Well, it's going to be tough for you from now on, but good luck, Scott said, turning away from her. Marrying someone who can say such hurtful things is impossible. Our parents in heaven would be disappointed if I married someone like that. Olivia nodded in agreement. That's true. Mom was so kind, and Dad was very compassionate. I see now that my idea of a perfect couple was based on them. I want to have a relationship like that with Scott. Scott smiled at Olivia, his eyes softening. We can build that kind of relationship together, Olivia. John stepped forward, his expression stern. Scott, could you let go of Olivia's hand for a moment? It seems you've made your decision, brother. And one more thing, Nickel. You are responsible for all the wedding expenses. Nickel's face fell. Ouch, that's going to be a big hit on my wallet, she muttered, her voice filled with despair. Well, Nickel, Scott continued, I think it's best to call off the wedding. I've already told all my friends, and I've posted about the dress, the food, and the venue on social media. Nickel's eyes widened with realization. No, no, I can't have the wedding called off. I've already told everyone. I've shared everything online. How am I supposed to explain this? Maybe you should delete those posts, Scott suggested calmly. Most people who see them don't even know you. Is it really worth boasting to strangers about something that's not going to happen? Nickel looked around frantically, trying to find a way out of her predicament. Wait, please, this is impossible. You have to reconsider. Think about it, please, she begged. Scott sighed, looking at Nickel with a mix of pity and resolve. Nickel, you need to think this over. What you did was hurtful and disrespectful. It's going to be hard for you, but you have to face the consequences of your actions. As Scott turned to leave, Nickel's voice grew more desperate. Please, Scott, don't leave me like this. I'll do anything to make it right, she cried. Scott paused for a moment, then continued walking away, leaving Nickel to reflect on her actions. The reality of her situation was finally sinking in, and she realized that she had to take responsibility for the chaos she had caused. Meanwhile, Olivia and John watched the scene unfold with a sense of relief and closure. They knew that their family dynamics would be different from now on but they also understood that this change was necessary for everyone involved. As they left, Olivia took Scott's hand, feeling a sense of hope for their future together. Despite the turmoil, she knew that they had made the right decision and that they could face whatever challenges lay ahead with confidence and strength. Back at home, Olivia and Scott sat down together, reflecting on the events of the day. I'm so proud of you, Scott, Olivia said softly. You stood up for what's right, even when it was difficult. Scott smiled, holding Olivia close. I couldn't have done it without you, Olivia. You've been my rock through all of this, and I'm so grateful for your support. As they looked out the window, the sun set on a day that marked a new beginning for them both. They knew that the road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but they were ready to face it together, with love and determination. And so, they moved forward leaving the past behind and embracing the future with open hearts and unwavering faith in each other. I feel like I hear something, but let's not worry about it and move on. Wait, where are you going, brother? 
We're off to host an engagement party for Scott and Olivia. Well then, my princess, shall we go? Wait, what? Brother Scott? This is suddenly so embarrassing. Thanks to my brother's kind planning, what was supposed to be a simple wedding turned into a surprise engagement party for Scott and me. Many of our colleagues and mutual friends were invited. When Scott and I arrived and started greeting everyone, my brother suddenly began crying. Some people found it amusing and laughed, while others, maybe feeling touched, also shed some tears. Because of my brother's kind nature, Scott and I could announce our engagement in a warm and friendly setting. It felt good to have the support and love of our friends and family around us. Everyone seemed genuinely happy for us, and it made the moment even more special. Meanwhile, Nickel was kicked out of the venue, just as my brother had said she would be. Nickel had to pay for the entire cost of the ceremony, and went into debt to cover it. She had hoped to show off her new status as the CEO's wife and enjoy some fame and respect. However, things didn't go as she planned. She was fired from her job, and instead of living the life of a CEO's wife, she's now being chased by debt collectors. Nickel had planned to live with my brother, so her apartment lease had already been canceled. Now, she's left without a place to live and is dealing with the reality of her situation. Some people in the industry said they saw her in the park, looking lost and distressed, but it's unclear if it was really her. The glamorous life she hoped for has crumbled, and she's facing the harsh truth of her decisions. As for me, Olivia, I'm finally getting married to Scott. Don't worry, we will live happily together. My brother assures me that Scott is trustworthy, and that we will have a wonderful life together. We're excited to start this new chapter and build a happy future. I know it's safe, but there's still this uneasy feeling I can't quite put into words. What is this feeling? Hey John, I hope it's not too forward of me to ask. But could the four of us visit the grave on our next day off? I'd really like to meet your parents too. Scott, you're such a kind guy. Hey brother, you're going to make me cry again, haha. <laughs> Thanks to Scott's thoughtful suggestion, we've decided to spend our next day off visiting her parents' grave. It's something that feels both important and right to do. Even though my brother recently broke off his engagement, he's managed to stay his usual cheerful self, which is comforting to see. He's been so strong through everything, and I hope that one day a wonderful person will come into his life, someone who will make him the happiest man in the world. He deserves so much joy and love. As I thought about this, I realized my brother likely felt the same way. He's always been someone who looks out for others, and it's clear he wants the best for everyone around him. When I look up at the sky, it's a bright, clear blue without a single cloud in sight. There's something so peaceful about it, and it feels like the perfect setting for what we're planning. Watching my brother as he gazes up at the sky, I can't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude for everything he's done for me. He's always been there, looking out for me and making sure I was taken care of. I silently thank him in my heart, appreciating all the love and support he's given me over the years. As we plan our visit, I think about how meaningful it will be. Visiting the grave is not just about paying respects. It's about connecting with the past and honoring the memories of those who came before us. It's a chance to reflect on where we come from and the people who shaped our lives in ways we may not even fully understand. I know this visit will bring up a lot of emotions, but it feels right to do this together. Scott's suggestion has given us the opportunity to share something deeply personal and meaningful. I can already feel how this experience will bring us closer, and I'm grateful for that. My brother has always been someone I look up to. He's faced so many challenges with a smile, and he's never let anything bring him down for long. I admire his strength and resilience, and I know that he's going to find happiness again. It's just a matter of time before someone amazing comes into his life and sees him for the incredible person he is. As I look back on everything, I realize just how much my brother has sacrificed for me. He's always put my needs first, making sure I had everything I needed to succeed. 
He's been my rock, my guide, and my friend. And I'm so grateful for everything he's done. I can't imagine my life without his support and love. The sky above is so vast and endless, just like the gratitude I feel for my brother. As he stands there, looking up at the sky, I silently tell him, Thank you for everything. Thank you for raising me with so much care and for always being there when I needed you. This visit will be a way to honor not just her parents, but also the bond we share as a family. It's a chance to come together and support each other through the ups and downs of life. I'm looking forward to the day when we can all stand together at the grave, reflecting on the past and looking forward to the future with hope and love. My brother's strength and kindness inspire me every day. I hope that he finds someone who appreciates him for who he is and makes him as happy as he's made me. He deserves all the love and joy in the world, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. As we prepare for our visit, I feel a sense of peace knowing that we're doing something meaningful together. It's a reminder of the importance of family and the enduring bonds that connect us, no matter what challenges we face. I'm grateful for this opportunity to share something so special with my brother and Scott, and I know it will be a day we'll always remember.